Hey class, we're going to learn a little bit about how to use the technique dimensional analysis to approach a density calculation. This is a particularly useful trick because it is basically foolproof as long as you write your units and you organize your conversion factor correctly, then you end up with the right answer. So here we have two pieces of information. We have the original mass of mercury that I started with and the density of, of mercury, which is a constant at a given temperature for all samples of mercury. Okay, anytime I see a number with units that are a part of a fraction, that typically indicates that that is going to be something we call the conversion factor. And I want to write my conversion factor as the ratio that it is, like this. So one on top, one on bottom. Okay, so this conversion factor means that if I wanted to have one milliliter of mercury, I would weigh out 13.6 grams. Or if I wanted 13.6 grams, I could measure one milliliter. Okay, um, the other piece of information that we have here is the original mass of mercury in our sample. So um, that one is not a ratio of two different units, so that's our starting information um, as opposed to our conversion factor. Okay, so the conversion factor is always the ratio, and even though it's written here as grams per milliliter, I don't want to use it that way because my goal is to have the same unit that on the top here on the bottom of my fraction so that it will cancel. So that means that I want to put this one milliliter on the top and the number and the unit on the bottom. Okay, those are stuck together, the number and the unit. And I did that because if the grams of my ratio is on the bottom, then I cancel. All right, so if I've got the same unit on the top and the bottom, they cancel. And so mathematically what this means is I'm going to take 2.4 um, times 1 milliliter divided by 13.6. Right? So if I punch that into the calculator, we find out um, the answer to the question, which is what volume of mercury does this occupy? And the answer that we get is 0.176 milliliters. So I put in 2.4 divided by 13.6. And my calculator actually spits out a lot more numbers than that, 0.1764 and a bunch of other things. Here, my original number only has two numbers in it, so my final answer can only contain two numbers. So I'm going to round that 7 because um, the next number after it is a 6. So we're going to go 0.18 milliliters, and this is our final answer for this question. Okay, so um, that's kind of the method that we're going to use. It's called dimensional analysis, and it can be used anytime you need to convert from one unit to another. So for example, another use that we will frequently find helpful is say to go from milliliters of mercury that we just calculated into say liters. So this is a metric to metric conversion. It's within the metric system. Um, but I can use dimensional analysis to do it. So you start with 0.18 mils 0.18 milliliters as our starting point, and then I need a conversion factor that will relate my two variables, milliliters and liters. Okay, and so from what, what we learned in the metric system review section of chapter one is that one liter contains 1,000 milliliters total. So that's the relationship I want, and I chose to put milliliters on the bottom here so that I can cross it off like so. Okay, so if I wanted to know how many m liters our sample was, I would take 0.18 divided by 1,000. And I'm going to choose to write this in scientific notation because it, it's a little bit easier. Um, so the number the calculator says is 0 
0, 1, 7, 6. So if I want to write that in notation, I'm going to go 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4, and then I need my unit, liters. Okay, so I'm going to show you another example of kind of a similar process. For example, if, if I wanted to weigh out exactly 50 milliliters, uh, measure rather, 50 milliliters of water, which has the chemical formula H2O, and I know that the density of water at this temperature is 0.9987 grams per milliliter, so this is density, um, I can weigh out the water to get a very precise amount of volume. And in order to know how much to weigh, I've got to use the relationship between grams and milliliters that's kind of given in the density here. So grams and milliliters. All right. So we're starting with 50 milliliters of water. And so this time, my dimensional analysis needs to have milliliters on the bottom. So I'm actually going to write it exactly how we were, we were provided it in the problem. This is an invisible one, right? We don't always write it, but anytime we have a unit on the bottom that appears to have no number, it actually has a one. Okay, um, so... So if I wanted to weigh out the perfect amount of water to get exactly 50 milliliters at this temperature, then I would weigh out 49.9 grams of water, okay? Um, not quite 50, but it's pretty close because the density of water is usually pretty close to 1. Okay, so this is again another example of dimensional analysis where this time I've used density with grams on top because I was trying to figure out the mass of something. On the prior example, we used density here with grams on the bottom and milliliters on top. Okay, So they're distinctly different approaches, but it's the same mathematical method. We just want to write our units so that they cancel one on top, one on bottom. And again, the same thing works really well in the metric system. So for example, if I have a patient who is 54 kilograms in weight, and I needed to figure out how much they weigh in pounds, um, all I need to figure out is how many pounds are there in a kilogram, and it turns out, according to Google, there's 2.2 .2 pounds for one kg. Now this conversion I would be giving to you, or you can look it up for your quizzes, because it's, it's between the metric system and the English system. Um, the one between milliliters and liters that I just showed you, I expect you to sort of learn or have learned already it's because it's within the metric system. Okay, So, um, knowing that there's 2.2 .2 pounds in a kilogram, all I have to do is put one kilogram on top and one on the bottom, and then the math here is 54.1 times 2.2, .2, and we get 119. Point Oh, 02 pounds out of the calculator. Our data has three significant figures and our conversion factor has two. Conversion factors should not limit our significant figures because they're a defined value. So we're going to use our data here in this case to report the correct number of significant figures as 119 pounds.